So we've all seen the rubber stamp meeting videos from North Korea, right? Kim Jong-un giving a speech, his generals and top officials writing everything down that he's saying. And they all have these little notebooks to take notes on. And the entire video paints Kim as this powerful leader, this man who knows everything. At the center of it, it is to highlight Kim's dictatorial power. But of course, to most of us, it just looks ridiculous because it just highlights the power imbalance between Kim and his servants. I mean, everybody knows Kim is a dictator, but it's highlighting the power dynamic here. And on the other hand, for a very long time, we thought that China wasn't anything like this. Well, all that is changing now. Welcome to China Insider, I'm David Zhang. It's that time of the year again, time for the annual rubber stamp legislative meetings, where for nine hours, you basically become a hand-raising machine to agree on everything. <laughs> This year, however, it was a little bit more exciting. This video here shows a man who drove his car into the barricades at the CCP headquarters in Beijing. At the front gate here, he's seen dragged away by a bunch of the security officials. While this isn't the first time that somebody has done this, but this is the first time that we've seen a leaked, completely shot video like this recording the entire thing. And that's been leaked and circulated online. And that's unprecedented. Meanwhile, at a press conference, a female reporter was seen rushing toward the stand, seemingly like she wanted to either ask a question or raise a concern after they had announced that the press conference was over. Of course, she was immediately surrounded by security guards and pushed to the ground. And then the shot, the live shot, immediately cut to the anchor. So nobody really knows what happened here, but it is very suspicious because guess what? Everyone that attended said press conference will be closely screened and as well as hold clearance to that particular conference. So it's not like they just randomly had an outsider who dressed up as an, an official reporter to come in and do that. These tiny details give us a glimpse of the state of China today, which is filled with anxiety. And uh, while inside the halls where they raise their hands like machines, outside of it, people are really fed up and we're seeing the reflection of that. The real representation of people, which is those that dare to rush the authorities. Now this year, people noticed something quite unusual with the rubber stamp legislative process where basically these people called the people's representative go and raise their hand in agreement to these legislations and resolutions being passed. Now, traditionally at the conclusion of said annual meeting, reports and resolutions are made to be voted upon. Now this year, two particular ones stood out to people online. This year, there were less against votes than 10 years ago when the same resolutions were uh, voted upon. For example, the Supreme Court law this year had a total vote of 2,834 votes in favor of passing the resolution with 44 votes against it and 22 abstentions. Compare that to the 2014 version, which by the way was, was 10 years ago, they had 24, 25 votes in favor and 378 votes against. So within the 10 year span of time, uh, they had about nine times less against votes this time around compared to that of 10 years ago. Similarly, for another one of the resolutions, this one's for judicial law, in the current version had 2,864 votes in favor, 27 against, and nine abstention. Compare that again to the 10 years ago voting in 2014, which had 2,402 in favor, 390 against, which again, you know, that's a decrease of more than 10 times compared to that of 10 years ago. For those people that act as hand-raising machine, uh, they didn't carry as much political risk 10 years ago. Compare that to now, voting no might actually land you in some trouble. So people who vote in those con uh, congressional votes are more likely to vote yes or vote for in favor compared to voting against it, even though everybody knows at the end that uh, these votings don't really matter, right? Because all the resolutions and all the legislative processes are done by the CCP, and so people really don't get a chance to vote. So these are just rubber stamp legislations. But then even then, you know, today that might land you in Chinese gulag. And the main part of today's episode is actually focusing on a detail which took place uh, following the conclusion of the annual two sessions, which were these legislative meetings. So according to reporters, and as well as photos now online, it was that a particular detail surrounding Xi Jinping that really drew the attention of many people who have been closely studying the Chinese politics. So the details are as follows. 
According to the reporters and information at the rubber stamp congressional meeting in Beijing on March 9th, which is about two days ago, the chairman of Congress, who is also a Politburo Standing Committee member, one of the top officials of the CCP, uh, Zhao, along with two other officials, they were giving reports on the state of China's National Congress. And here, this meeting, Xi Jinping was in attendance, but sort of as a guest, considering that he wasn't speaking, right? Technically, there's separation of power, but everybody knows that's really, again, it's fake. But the idea is that she was in attendance. He had his second in command, the powerless premier, Li Chang, along with a third person who is the evil and cunning, but the, you know, I guess the advisor to Xi Jinping, Wang Huning, who's also in attendance. So like I said, it may seem like Xi Jinping was respecting the separation of power, but everybody that was sitting there, uh, you know, considering other people were giving the reports, still they know that Xi Jinping is really the only person who has real say on anything that's being reported upon. And that this rubber stamp legislature, it's just a pointless organization. It's a front, right? It's a show. It's a facade. Because Xi Jinping sits at top of the paramount uh, committee called the Standing Committee of the Politburo, He's essentially above everybody else. He's not really amongst those top officials either. And so that makes Xi Jinping the paramount leader right now. And he's really the only person who has real power to say things or to do things. Now, during one of the official speech at this particular congressional meeting, uh, the second in command, Li Chang, seems to have found something on a report that they were given to read upon. And he started discussing it with Xi Jinping who then was joined by a third person, Wang Huning. And so throughout the entire speech of this particular official, they were going back and forth. Li Chang and Wang, they were going back and forth. Xi Jinping would join and interrupt them and start talking with them. And it seemed like something important did just particularly take place during this particular report or the speech. Now take a look at this photo here from a recent meeting, just to show you who Li Chang is, right? The second in command. He's literally slouching lower than Xi, physically appearing, right? Unlike all of the previous premiers who was supposed to be the counterpart or the co-partner in organizational and just political structure and power, Li is literally voluntarily slouching to show that he is inferior to Xi. So the CCP under Xi no longer hides the fact that Xi Jinping is the only person in the room that people should look at what he says or does. Everybody else's words don't really matter anymore. This was already a joke amongst Chinese people online saying that you know, everyone under Xi is kowtowing to him because he's like the emperor, right? Uh, for example, there's a photo here with the foreign minister Wang Yi who just bows his head down to listen to Xi's command. Now, people online call him eunuch Wang instead of foreign minister Wang just because, he, you know, the way that he's acting, it's like he's basically a servant to the emperor instead of an official who's supposed to listen to his superior. And other people joke behind closed doors at Zhongnan High, which is the headquarters of the CCP, that everyone before seeing Xi, they have to bow down and do the great ceremonial uh, bowing before they're allowed to speak and meet with Xi Jinping. Back to the meeting, right? Just imagine the scene now. You have the two servants on each side of Xi Jinping, and they're like, you know, my great lord or my great emperor Xi, like we just found this particularly important but disastrous detail in this report. We require your attention. And uh, being the loyal dog that I am, you must read upon this and give us your attention and that we will serve you with all of our uh, attention to resolve this issue on your behalf. And that's just how you imagine like the way that they're portraying their body language. It's like, it's just, it's so different than we're used to where we're seeing government officials don't act like this way anywhere else, except in communist countries like North Korea and China. And to me, that's basically what took place. Now, some more details, right? So after the uh, the speech, or even during the speech, as I said, that they were kind of going back and forth. Eventually, when this first official finished his speech, the second one started talking, that's when the chairman, Zhao, joined in, right? And it was at this point uh, where a majority of the details start to capture an even more bizarre situation. So it says that after uh, the speech, she was seen scribbling down words on the report. Li Chang and Wang Huning exchanged opinions from time to time. Then uh, it came after the, the second speech that Zhao came near Xi and began to join the conversation. Now, to call it a conversation, it's basically to downplay what really happened. It was more like a, um, how do you say, it was more like a lecture. It was more like reprimanding him for what he just did or he did uh, leading up to this, right? And then reporter also revealed details saying that Xi Jinping was picking up the report and like smacking on the report and then banging on the table. He had such a serious expression that reporters, you know, 100 meters away could feel the tenseness in the atmosphere in the room. 
Uh, and then from time to time, he even like just kind of knocked on paper. Like he, he was basically bashing Zhao, right? And then for three minutes straight, Zhao stood by his side, listened to him carefully. And then after he was done, he smacked the report down on the table. And then Zhao immediately took out a pen and started writing notes on it. So if you remember back in 2022, this was at the 20th Party Congress. I made a short video on this. Uh, Xi Jinping's predecessor, former Paramount leader Hu Jintao, was ordered by Xi to be carried out of the room in front of like hundreds and thousands of reporters and cameras. So that video was like tremendously shocking to everybody because for the first time in a very long time, we saw a glimpse of the actual state of the CCP, right? There's no alternative opinions allowed. There's no dissent. There's only Xi's order. And it seems to have gotten just worse and worse because now... What was once considered to be his sort of dividing cabinet members or even just people that are supposed to share power with him, right? China for, for a while after Mao died was under the so-called collective leadership. That's no more, right? This is straight back to one man rule under Mao. Now, Xi Jinping probably isn't even, uh, he doesn't probably care what others' opinions are. He's probably happy that people actually call him emperor or at least allude to the fact that he is acting like an emperor. And I think this makes him happy in the fact that he doesn't have to speak out about it and everyone else thinks this way anyways. But keep in mind, the last time a guy who wasn't born of royal blood in China tried to call himself emperor, he lasted only like 80 something days. So in full public view, Xi Jinping publicly reprimanded one of his supposedly uh, inferior, like, you know, official guy. In reality, he's definitely changed the power dynamic within the party completely and permanently for the time being, at least till he's not, you know, he's not alive anymore. And this was obviously a public humiliation for who, for Zhao, who is supposed to be the official ranked third ranking person inside the CCP, right? Just by seniority, by age, by just records, right? But even then, it doesn't really matter because guess what? Number two ranking Premier Li Keqiang, he's voluntarily given up his power because he knows that any little bits amount of power that he still has, it's just going to land him in hot water. So he might as well just be, you know, pointless or useless. So China is going as North Korea as it can, as fast as it can walk towards the state in, of North Korea right now. And those videos, you could really just replace Kim's head with Xi's head and it still be the exact same story. Now, it is true that Zhao, the chairman of the National People's Congress, was never sort of the close confidant of Xi Jinping. He never gained his trust, right? Even though Zhao uh, had maintained, he, he was one of the head butcher of the, uh, you know, the very public anti-corruption campaign, he was still not one of the close circle uh, sort of member of Xi's, uh, the, his, his like block. But even then, like it shows us that after he became this chairman, he, uh, she basically stripped him of all of his staff and all of his, like his, his people, um, purged them from the party positions and to just basically isolate him as this like almost empty rubber stamp position to just, uh, kind of retire on his way out. And basically it highlights to us one thing. It, it is that everyone in the CCP from top to bottom, anybody below she is in survival mode. This is very much alluding back to the Stalin era, right? You could easily disappear for something that you might've not even realized was bad, uh, that could risk your career. And so it, it's really smart if you think about it, what Li Chang, the premier is doing, he's all smiles. He's just bowing closely down to Xi because he knows that any little mistake he makes is going to jeopardize his life, his livelihood, um, so he doesn't just, he doesn't want to be involved in anything. He doesn't want power. He doesn't want any say. He doesn't want any control. He just wants a title in name only. And of course, there's that guy named Wang Huning, the strategist, right? This guy has able to, he was able to survive three iterations of CCP leadership. So the chance of him being, um, you know, removed from power is very unlikely because, he, because his title used to be called the political makeup artist of CCP leadership. All these slogans that these people have, it all came from Wang. And so he's, he's pretty much safe. But for everybody else, they're all thinking about one question, which is when is she's last day? And so that I can be free of this eternal like torture of just not knowing what I would say or do would land me in hot water. And so you can conclusively say that today's China is controlled by one man in the CCP and that, you know, it is no longer a party of many uh, before or after Mao died, but is now a party of one again, back to the era of Mao Zedong. All right, that's it today for the episode on China Insider, exploring how China's annual rubber stamp sessions had a lot of details revealing the state of China's politics. If you enjoy the content, leave a like, comment below your thoughts, and subscribe to our channel. Until next time, bye-bye.